originally planned to make this video two days ago, but I didn't know that ink doesn't break down like watercolor, and I ended up with this mess. With this mess. And it just came out horrendous. And I had worked on this piece all day long, from 2 o'clock all the way until almost midnight. It was 11.42. And I had came back from letting it dry on the last layer. And when I came back, just the face had, like, feathered out like crazy. And... Yeah, so I spent the next few days like this, you know, crying over all that hard work. But hey, that's all right. And second go around, which is what you guys are going to see today, I know a little bit more about ink and how it's not like watercolor. So from what I've gathered, you can use a pencil to sketch it out. You can use pencil to ink it in. And then from there, you can only use one marker. Traditionally you would use Copics. I don't have any Copics or anything like that. I'm not an illustrator. So I'm just going to roll with the punches and use my all-time favorite brand, Crayola. I decided to use the green because I'm getting some mad Frankenstein vibes from that. And yeah, without further ado, let's just start the video. So starting off with my green marker, the first thing I'm going to do is color in the areas that are going to be the darkest areas first and just build up from there. So I like to go absolute darkest to the lightest. Also, take note that all the shadows and proportions and everything are already traced and that's because there was no way in hell that I was going to re-go in there and redraw all the proportions. So I had just traced what I had done yesterday just to save me a lot of time. I recommend if you do this to work with it by starting off with the ink first and then going in with the watercolor technique and it does take a little bit to learn how to use ink like watercolor because they're so different for example it's very difficult to build it up i had a really hard time with it one thing to note is that it's really hard to blend with ink so i personally like to use mediums that i can blend but this bad boy oh my god i it was a pain in the butt both of them that i did were pains in the butt here's an example of me trying to blend out ink like do you see that it feathers like a mother and if you try to add more water it just makes it way worse Cool little trick that I learned is to get your paintbrush and dip it onto the very tip of the marker and this will give you more precision and it'll just make everything look a little bit more cleaner. So the marker tip is really thick and as soon as you put it down you get this really thick layer but if you're doing eyelashes or nostrils or anything like that I like to use this little technique. And so I think you guys can see I'm already starting with the watercolor. Now whenever I wanted like a super super light wash ink is really strong surprisingly so just the tiniest bit mixed with water makes a really nice wash but it's very hard to pick it up with the paintbrush um, unlike watercolor once it's on there it's on there for the rest of your life Frankenstein has this texture on his face so the best way I thought I could execute that was by stippling with my brush and it did take a while but I think it came out pretty dang successful Next up we have the most satisfying part which is adding in the last layer of dark shadows. Now this is always my favorite because it just makes everything look so nice, it cleans everything up, it adds some more 3D look to it and it's just all around satisfying. It's pretty crazy to think what you can do with one Crayola marker now. I got the 10 or 8 pack for $2.37, which is pretty good for a whole entire pack. And keep in mind that I used this marker not just for this one drawing, but for two drawings because I had that first one that we don't talk about. So if you're looking for another way to multitask your art supplies and take it to the next level, I highly recommend trying this. It's really interesting to use but it is a lot more difficult than using watercolor. So I guess like my final review of using one Crayola marker to create a gradient in different shades is that you need a lot of layering, you need to know how to layer, and whatever you do layer, make sure you go over it and over it because by the time it dries, it will not dry that color. It will dry much lighter than what it actually is. 
And who knows, maybe using Copics is much different than using Crayola, because Crayola is definitely on the cheaper side. And if you're anything like me, your artwork is never done, so you just want to add more and add more. But the tricky thing is, is if you add more with ink, like the more water is going to get into the paper and more likely it's going to feather. So just be careful of that. But anyway, I just decided right here and there, like stop, it's good. And yeah, this is the finished Crayola piece. So much for watching my video if you have any questions y'all know the drill leave it down below and yeah i love you guys and i'll see you next video i'm dressed up for valentine's day Woo! no i'm kidding this is actually what i'm wearing <laughs>